And now, folks, let's bring in our all-star panel. Here now is Mark Lampkin, CEO of Lampkin Wealth Management. We have Mike Holland, Chairman of Holland & Company, Dave Kansas, Chief Markets Commentator at The Wall Street Journal, and Brian Dolan, Chief Currency Strategist at Forex.com. He's the author of Currency Trading for Dummies. Brian, let me start with you, please. You heard Michelle Caruso Carrera's report. One almost thinks that this is proceeding on the right track and that possibly it will wind up turning out okay. Maybe the bears gone viral will be wrong. What are you thinking tonight on this difficult situation? Sure, Larry. Uh, for the short-term crisis, namely obtaining funding for the July refinancing that Greece has to do, I think they're going to get the money, and that's going to mean this short-term crisis and the euro bears are going to get sidetracked. Uh, the longer-term picture, though, of uh, securing the second longer-term bailout for Greece, though, that's going to drag on for a while, and that's going to keep the euro under pressure. So I think the euro is uh, set for a rebound here, but it's not going to see uh, significant strength anytime soon. And what do you, you know, there's so many worst-case arguments out there. Let mm. me just pick one. The bank contagion issue. French banks put on the Moody's credit watch and so forth. A restructuring of the debt with private debt holders, which I read to mean banks having to take a bigger burden. Is that in the cards or is that really a side issue? Uh, no, that's uh, definitely the source of the debate. Uh, but I think ultimately the ECB is going to win out. Uh, they're going to prevent uh, any, any sort of a default, whether it's a soft default or a hard default, uh, and any losses to the banking sector. We are really, uh, that's my favorite scenario too, but um, uh, we are talking again about a potential liquidity uh, financial crisis again, the contagion of which would not stay on the continent. It would spread globally, and we're talking about another potential Lehman-type uh, financial meltdown. All right, let's go to that. Mike Holland, I want to bring you in. You have seen a thing or two about crises and whatnot, a Lehman-type breakdown. That would mean, presumably, a total freezing up of all liquidity and credit in the funding markets, similar to what happened in September 2008. Mike Collin, how do you handicap that from what you know, what you've seen in the past, and what you're hearing now? I don't believe, Larry, that it's likely. The reason I don't believe it's likely is because we're talking about it. Back in 2008, when all of this occurred, it was like a tsunami of bad news coming, and one thing led to another, and it was hard to believe how quickly uh, confidence just went right out the uh, window. So I don't think that it's likely, but ringing in the back of my head is, is the comment at the birth of the euro from one of your favorite economists, the late great Milton Friedman, who said, the first financial crisis, the euro will disappear. Who knows? We'll get through this, but I don't think I, I don't think the Armageddon that people are talking about is the likely outcome. All right, that's reassuring. Mark Lampkin, let me go that. The euro will disappear. Another viral bear case is that Greece will be forced out of the European Union. They will be forced out of the euro currency. They will have to go back to the drachma. That will destroy the Greek drachma. It'll destroy Greece, and it might destroy the European Union as well. What's your thinking? How do you handicap that kind of total worst case catastrophic outcome? Greece takes down Europe, and Europe takes down the rest of the world, literally. Well, I think 75%, the credit default markets are saying 75% chance of Greek default. So I don't think that's going to be a big surprise. But Greek's not by itself. It's Portugal, Ireland, Spain. Right. What happens to the rest of those countries? Do they drop out? Then it's financial disaster. And that's what well, I think the market's watching. How do you handicap? You think that's in the stock market? Or do you think the stock market is edging around that? In other words, has that worst case been discounted? No, it has not been discounted. And I think everybody knows this is going to be fixed in some way or another. And I think the EU and the IMF are going to fix this. I think it's going to come down to the 11th hour. I think there's going to be austerity measures. Bondholders are going to get clipped. The question is how much, but it's not total disaster. Dave Kansas, you know, it all comes down to the 11th hour. The continuing budget resolution here in the States last December, what was it? No, last uh, February, March, came down to the 11th hour. The debt ceiling in the U.S., Dave, is going to come down to the 11th hour. The Greek issue is going to come down to the 11th hour. I got more 11th hours than I care to count, Dave. How do you read this story? Well, I think the Greek situation, it's, it's hard to figure out exactly how it's going to work work in the next coming months. I think they are going to kick the can down the road effectively, and that's going to reduce some of the fear in the market. But I don't think anybody's really anticipating what could happen in a messy default, and that's what has everybody on edge. And that still remains a very real possibility come sometime in the fall.
All right, let me go back to my friend Brian Dolan. Brian, the credit default swaps, the uh, credit insurance uh, protections have really discounted a lot of worst cases. I want to ask you how bad that's going to be and how bad will the very closely related bond market sell-off be? Not only Greece, but also Portugal and Ireland, and let's throw in Spain too, because these are all impactors on the stock market. Uh, certainly. Uh, they're, I think right now they're exaggerating the reaction a little bit. I think they probably overshot uh, a lot of the, uh, uh, I think a fair amount of speculative hot money has flown into this trade just this week. Uh, we've seen this certainly in the euro. A lot of uh, option interest is being uh, bought for downside exposure for the euro. Uh, and as I said, though, I think this near-term crisis is likely to be averted. And just going back to what a lot of the other guests had indicated, I think the, a lot of the worst-case scenarios of, of a default and uh, of a financial contagion are not likely to to happen simply because for them to happen it's uh, proceeding down this path of, of potential chaos and we've been through that before the global recovery is already struggling the world is watching the EU and the IMF and they simply can't allow that to happen and Mike Holland I want to add to that the reassuring Russo Cabrera I know it's not definite that the Chinese may be riding to the rescue you know something about China riding to the rescue yeah. what do you make of that I mean I'm hearing a very calm discussion maybe with the exception of Mark who's a little more riled up about this okay fair <laughs> enough now fair enough this is a riling up event yeah. but Mike will the Chinese ride to the rescue are they the euro peripheral bond buyer of last resort uh, quick answer, Larry, is yes, because Premier Wen, who's over there this coming week, would not be going over there if he weren't giving a clear signal that the Chinese are uh, the, the, uh, the, the uh, white hat riding in on the horse uh, from, from the West to save the town. And I actually believe that, uh, that the comments they've made that, that have been supportive will grow over the next several weeks. And contrast that, Mike Holland. Mr. Obama, President Obama said today, basically, it's Greece's problem and it's Europe's problem. The <laughs> Chinese, on the other hand, are saying, no, wait a minute, we right. want to get involved. We want to have a little burden share, a little financial burden sharing here. What do you make of that contrast? Well, there's another person who was in Washington not that long ago, I think he's in Chicago, said that every crisis has a wonderful opportunity in it. It's, it's awful to waste that opportunity. This crisis is wonderful for the Chinese. They have the opportunity to once again uh, take a, a leapfrog over the United States in terms of helping th mm. these countries get out of this mess. All right, I'm going to leave it there, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Now, Brian Dolan, we appreciate your comments very much. Everyone else going to hang out. We're going to talk directly about the stock market because stocks seem pretty calm today about the crisis in Greece, at least in relation to yesterday. But now, will our stuttering economy be in further danger by, let's say, tomorrow's quadruple witching hour? We're going to get to the bottom of that. If it's not one thing, it's another. All right, so despite the crisis in Greece, the Dow managed a 64-point rally today. Actually seemed a bit calmer about the whole story. But then we've got the stubborn problem of our stuttering economic recovery, and we've got some uh, quadruple witching tomorrow. We're back with Mark Lampkin of Lampkin Wealth Management, Mike Holland of Holland Company, and Dave Kansas of the Wall Street Journal. Mike Lampkin, you're kind of our resident bear, and I just want to put up on the full screen quickly. We had a terrible number from the Philadelphia Fed Manufacturing, which confirmed other Fed manufacturing ports. Really lousy number. We had a not-so-terrible housing starts number and a not so terrible jobless claims number and I guess I want to ask you economy and profits profits are the mother's milk of stocks how do you see it I think you're exactly right and that's why this six-week decline has only been roughly seven percent and but when you look at I mean, the Philly Fed that's the biggest drop they've had in three months ever ISM the biggest drop since 84 so you've got mixed reports right now and because of that there's no compelling reasons to dive in with both uh, with, with both hands you right now. You think this correction is going to go on? I think that July August is the time frame I have we'll have a lot of, re of the resolutions that we're talking about on on both U.S. debt ceiling European debt ceiling and, and second quarter earnings Where's correction. Your dough? Where's your money? Right now I've got 50% in cash, slightly uh, over 50% right, cash. Right. The rest is in technology stocks that deal with businesses that enhance productivity and profitability. I also like natural resources. I'm using this pullback to go in because the next 12 to 24 month, I love it. And adjustable rate corporate bonds. Adjustable rate corporate bonds. Dave Kansas, let me come to you. We do have some hurdles. We have the Greece hurdle, which we've already talked about. We also have the debt ceiling hurdle, David. We also have the QE2 ending hurdle. The Fed meets next week. QE2 is going to end. There'll be no QE3. How do you see this? whole story, sputtering economy and all these external events? 
Well, I think, Larry, you know, the economic data are definitely mixed, but I think a lot of the bears are overplaying the Japanese hand here. You know, you look at the impact of that earthquake. Toyota today said they're going to restart production fully not until September. That's a big impact on manufacturing. It's a big impact on a lot of industries, including technology. And I think second quarter earnings are going to reflect some of that, but we're going to see a snapback once those effects burn their way through. So but, I think there is more pessimism than is warranted right now, especially as it relates to the economy. But, Dave, if the factories don't restart for a couple months, does that mean we got another round of bad numbers? Well, it could be a challenging quarter, second quarter earnings, but one thing I would point out is even ratcheted down GDP forecasts are going to be higher than the 1.8% we had in the first quarter, so there's still a chance for some positive upside surprises when the second quarter earnings get underway. Michael Holland, what does quadruple witching mean? What's that going to do to the market? And is, by the way, is that the source of the gigantic uh, volatility we've seen this week? Uh, last question first, Larry. The answer is yes. We, the quadruple witching is uh, four different things going on tomorrow, which people, players who are involved in that have to get set up days before, so it's been affecting the market all week, up and down. There's also an S&P quarterly rebalancing of the index tomorrow on top of this. So the, the volatility is, is really interesting in that we didn't go down a whole lot. I was very interested in that. A lot of uh, old Wall Street veterans have been worried about some of the comparisons between this week and the news and the quadruple witching and 1987 and 2008. Uh, their, their worst fears so far haven't been realized, but they're watching carefully. And uh, right now, if we don't get the major decline that, that uh, people have been fearful of, uh, I think we may be set up for an oversold bounce of some significance. Oversold bounce of some significance. So yeah. short term, you're looking for some better stuff to come out of stocks. I would say if you don't get a major decline in the next couple of days, I think that you have stocks like Apple. We heard earlier the technology stocks. The Apple is selling at 11 times earnings. That doesn't make any sense. Uh, it doesn't mean that it can't go down a little bit, but it, it's not real risky. In a, in a market that, that is looking for things to buy, um, those kinds of companies can be up 10, 20, 30 percent in six months. Cut low correction, bottom could be approaching, Mr. <laughs> Holland. Could be approaching. <laughs> From your lips to God's ears. All right, we will see. Thank you very much. Mike Holland, Mark Lampkin, and Dave Kansas. We appreciate it.